We're back in Florida and today we're gonna to answer one of the biggest questions we get about no dig fence. And that is how deep do I need to drive my post? You know what? One of the problems is I don't know where you guys are gonna install all your fences, but I can show you how you can determine that for yourselves. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna take these four posts and we're gonna drive them to four different depths. I think we're gonna do a two, a two and a half, a three, and then a three and a half. These are all of our I post no dig aluminum posts for our no dig aluminum system that's proprietary to SWI. But we're gonna drive all these to different depths and then show you how you can determine whether or not you've gotten it deep enough in your area. And we're gonna use a worst case scenario. Right behind me, we have an area here that really never dries up. So we're gonna do it right here. This is always kind of swampy down in here. This is Florida's worst case scenario as far as I'm concerned. And I figured that would be a good illustration of how this system works and whether or not you can even get it good enough in a swampy area. So stay tuned, we'll see if this works. The first thing we're gonna do though, is we're gonna mark each one of these for how deep we're gonna drive it. Two foot is what I would consider a minimum for anything. There's no way that anything's ever gonna work less than two feet. So we'll go two, two and a half, three, and three and a half. Now the other thing I wanna answer, can I install this system, the aluminum no dig system without any special tools? And the answer is yes. And what we're gonna use today for that is the strain right post pounder. I like this one particularly because it can fit a variety of different posts. A lot of the pounders don't have a big enough throat to fit a lot of stuff. This one's got a nice big throat and we can fit all the way up to two and seven eighths inch pipe in here. So good for chain link. I think if you modified it just slightly, you'd probably even be able to drive some Postmasters with it. I'm not going to try and get them straight. I'm just going to try and get them plumb. Ew. Hence the reason I have different footwear today because I don't want to be swampy. Nobody likes swamp foot. Yeah. The first up is my 24. Now all these posts are seven feet tall. Next up will be our 30. Once you get the posts in there, probably about a foot or foot and a half, you'll notice that they're a lot harder to move. So it's that first probably foot that's really important to make sure you get it all plumbed up good. And don't jack yourself in the jaw with one of these things. Don't be doing this. That happens. That happens a lot. Whew, see anybody else getting hot? It's warm. So what do you think? Which one's going to be deep enough? This one's halfway in the ground. This one's almost halfway in the ground. This one's two and a half feet in the ground, and then this one's only two feet. For our company, we usually do them like this. We do them three feet in the ground for aluminum. We do three and a half feet for vinyl and three and a half feet also for our privacy wood fence. We've got some good data on what it takes to drive a vinyl fence and have it hold up to good hurricane strength winds. And you can check that video out right up here. So right now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna do a simple pull test. What I want to have happen is I want to be able to pull on this and eventually we're gonna be able to bend the post and the ground will not give way and I won't be able to pull the post back up out of the ground. So when we can do that, we can bend the post and the ground still doesn't cavitate around it or come up, then we know we've got it deep enough. I guess we could have drove a post a foot, but I can tell you right now, it's not gonna work. Okay, so let's get to it. You can see this is kind of giving away a little bit. Like this is holding better than I thought it would. Honestly, for here, this is holding as well as most people's concreted posts would hold right here at two feet deep. I won't break it, I can tell you that. Oh yeah. So we got a nice bend on it. I would say that one is almost good enough. I would want maybe just a little bit better. But yeah, I'm able to bend this post without the ground just completely falling away. Let's take a minute and show you what it's gonna look like if we don't succeed. So we're gonna go a foot down. What I wanna do is illustrate when you know you have a problem. If I don't go deep enough, that's what's gonna happen. See the ground just fell away and I have a big cavernous hole right here. The ground, there was not enough surface area and then that's what I can do. When you don't have it deep enough, that's the kind of failure you'll have. And that's not what we want to see. We want to get past that. Ultimately, what I want to do is I want to get past that and still be able to bend it over and not even pull it out. I think the 30 inch post here will be pretty close to that. Here we go. So we're getting that twisting action. 
we're definitely bending it. Definitely bending it. I'm gonna go back the other way. Oh yeah, I can almost get it. But there's not gonna be a big cavernous hole. And it's taking quite a bit of effort to get it out. So, and one of the things that actually helps us is you'll notice we get a bunch of this dirt inside of these webbings and that actually helps give us strength and helps give us resistance from pulling out. Same thing happens with the Postmaster Post. It can take an enormous amount of force to get these things pulled up out of the ground. And it's because we have all that surface area and it gets in there and just creates all kinds of friction. But this post, I was still able to get it out. But even this post is gonna take a heck of a lot more abuse, many multiples more than what an ordinary aluminum post set in concrete would. If I was to pull on an ordinary aluminum post and set in concrete, we'd have snapped off like a long time ago. I would be able to snap it off very, very easily. Would you guys like to see us break off some aluminum posts and see how strong these are? Because we claim that they're 10 times stronger. I'm pretty sure that I could break off a normal aluminum post and I would never break this one off. In fact, I'm pulling as hard as I can and all I'm able to do is get it to bend. But I guarantee I'll be able to break off an aluminum post. If you wanna see that, drop a comment down below and let us know if you're interested. Maybe we'll do that video. All right, so this is the one, this is how we do four foot aluminum fence down here. We do three feet deep. This is right in the swamp. We get a lot of this in Florida where it just holds water. That's still very, very sandy soil. It's just the water table so high. Uh, I don't know if I'll get this one out. Oh yeah, this is crazy strong. And normally we would have additional fence off this way, so they're not gonna twist as bad once the rest of the fence is connected, but it wants to twist just because uh, I'm pulling so hard on them. And that's the only way we really get it to bend. If I was straight in line with the webbing, uh, it doesn't wanna Yeah, it's, so I'm really working at this. We have driven this post to where we can bend the post. The biggest thing we're worried about is wind blowing on this thing and working it back and forth. So that's why we're kind of doing that. It's never gonna go this way, but we're gonna get it going back this way a whole bunch. It could potentially loosen up the post. Now on aluminum fence, we're not gonna see a lot of that because we don't have a lot of surface area, but that's more important on your vinyl and your wood privacy fences, so. Oh. No. I don't think I'm gonna get it. And the reason I'm not gonna get it is because even though it's really wobbling around here at the top, we're probably only wiggling it about halfway down. And then that last foot and a half is not moving at all. The whole top of the post is moving, but nothing's happening underground. It's just not transferring that movement. Did I get it a little bit? I think I did. I got it just a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Granted, this isn't water. Good solid clay ground. You're never getting this thing out of here. So this is a worst case scenario. Every once in a while we have to pull one of these posts and redrive it or we have to move it and we have to usually get out our pullers to do it. We can't do it by hand. It takes mechanical means to be able to get them out. I think the water is actually helping us here just a little bit. Oh, Still not easy. And again, it's important to recognize this isn't the action that we're worried about. It's the back and forth action. We're not getting reverse gravity. Gravity is forcing things into the ground. It's not pulling them out. The chances of this post working its way out of the ground is basically non-existent. But we did, we got it. I worked at it and we got it. I'm gonna tell you right now, three feet right here is good. We can bend the post and it's still very difficult to pull it out of the ground. I've gone to aluminum fences here in Florida where they used their whole whopping six inch hole, set it in concrete with a half a bag half a 60 pound bag, so maybe there's 30 pounds, and we pulled the post right out. We were able to wobble it around and just pop it right out. These are infinitely harder than a lot of the posts that we have had to pull here in Florida done with concrete because they're deeper. I just wanna be the first to say, I'm not excited about having to try and pull this one out. That one gave me enough of a workout, but I'm gonna try for you guys, for you guys, and only you guys, I'll try. Ooh. Yeah, this one, this is, the vinyl posts we drive are this deep in the ground and I can't even bend them. I have to use a mechanical bender that I just don't have enough lead to, to bend the pipe. Pulling on it as hard as I can and that's kind of where we're at with this. Ugh. Keep in mind, we're a lot stronger this way. So it's weaker this way, but you have all the fence giving you strength that way. So we're adding the webbing in the direction that it really matters to give us additional strength in our fence. I'm telling you, there's no way I'm getting this out. 
It's not happening. I'm even having a hard time bending it. And the reason I'm having a hard time bending it is because I don't have that extra foot or whatever leverage, so I can't grab it up here and give myself more leverage. Oh. Okay, yep, I'm gonna show you what we do to pull these out because that's not happening. So this is what we're gonna use to pull that post. Oh yeah, that's much better. Ciao. You might be thinking to yourself, well, that sure came out easy. Come on, man, gravity don't work like that. Unless you're worried about frost heave, the only thing you need to do is get below the frost. And here in Florida, there ain't no frost. That's why I moved here. That's why I left Wyoming. I had left all that nonsense behind me. And I guarantee you, 42 inches is more than good. Three foot on a four foot tall fence, is gonna be sufficient. Now, what I usually tell people is to do the same test that I just did, drive a post two foot, maybe two and a half foot, then three foot, and then if you really need to, if it's still breaking out at three foot, drive one three and a half feet to determine what your soil will bear, the load bearing capabilities to your soil. Dude, really? Pipe down. Everybody wants to be a star. As I was saying, Drive a couple test posts until you can get it to bend without the ground giving way like you saw right over here. If it does that, that's bad. What you want to do is you want to go somewhere probably between our first one where we had a little bit of give, but not a lot. And then the second one, 30 inches, honestly is probably going to be sufficient in most soils here in Florida. Can they pull out of the ground if you really work at them? Yeah, as you saw, I was able to pull all these out of the ground but that's not how the force is acting upon the fence. So we should be good even at 30 inches. So we go an extra six inches from the 30 just to give us that little bit of reassurance that we know we're doing the best job that we possibly can. And as you can see, we're doing things miles above what ordinary aluminum fence can withstand. And that is the same case for vinyl fence with our steel posts and our post masters. That's why we offer a lifetime guarantee on workmanship on our fences is because we have no concerns. Is anybody else doing that? No, they're gonna tell you all the things that their warranty doesn't cover, uh, like wind. Acts of God, I think is what they call that in the warranty. If you can get a four foot tall aluminum fence to blow over with one of these posts, uh, well, I'd like to see that. If you're looking to put a no dig aluminum fence in your backyard, click the link below where you can get all the information and products you need to do exactly what I did today. Until next time, I'm Mark with SWI, and we hope you have a good dang day.